I'm Steve Sarvey. I'm the DFL and Independence Party endorsed candidate for Congress in the 2nd District. We came down here to hold a forum on veteran issues uh, down here in Zombrota. You know, we were alerted to this forum back in July, and of course, we were honored to come, and we, uh, we submitted our um, RSVP right away. And my understanding is that he still had not uh, called back and said that he was going to be here or not. Do you know why Klein isn't here tonight? No, I do not. I, I was hoping he could be here. we got to come and hear these politicians uh, uh, lie. <laughs> I would favor Klein. Um, I think he's done a good job. Um, and basically, I've, I've heard that a lot also from other veterans, so that's good to have Ken reinforce that, too. Mail. You get mail from him. Well, I'm very interested in the candidates and uh, see who I'm going to vote for and uh, hope I pick out the best one. <laughs> and I'm running for office because I think like a lot of veterans, when you've been overseas, you want to make a difference. You see things and you want to come back home and you want to make the world a better place. And I think our country is going in the wrong direction. I liken it to uh, following that young second lieutenant into the woods. And the scariest thing is when they pull a map out and a compass and they're going in the wrong direction. And the, the old grizzled sergeant has to walk up and tap him on the shoulder and say, hey, sir, why don't we stop and check the map and see where we're at and find out where you're at, where you're at and where you need to go and take out that compass and find a new direction. I think that's what we need to do with our country. You'll find it, that I am a very, uh, I'll be a very great servant to the veterans because it's close to my heart. I've served both as an enlisted man and an officer. And I came back to being an enlisted man because I believe uh, in service as an NCO. And I think we need a view, an NCO's view of the world sometimes. I was uh, particularly disturbed about what's happened to our soldiers around the world, the way that they're being treated when they come home, in, in some respects. At uh, Walter Reed Hospital, for instance, where I had a soldier who lost his arm due to an ID, and I, I talked to him and asked him if things were really as bad as they were saying they were in the newspaper, and he said they were even worse. And while they've gotten much better, we need to make sure that those things don't happen in the first place. And I'm also, of course, very concerned about our soldiers that are returning with post-traumatic stress disorder and traumatic brain injury. We still have not treated our veterans uh, from Vietnam, uh, from Korea, and even from World War II are still suffering from those. And I want to make sure that we take care of them the way that, in a manner that they deserve. You know, I wouldn't have. Uh, we had three criteria. We, we stayed our position pretty early. Uh, we wanted to make sure that, that the uh, taxpayers got a piece of equity out of these, out of these companies. Uh, we wanted to make sure that there was a transparency and a, a coming back to the oversight that, that we need over the markets. And, uh, and, and we want to make sure that, obviously, this never happens again. Uh, and, and, you know, unfortunately, uh, this package did not really do much for the average taxpayer, for the middle class people that are worried about losing their homes. There's no talk about a, uh, a mortgage court or anything to take care of that. So uh, I wouldn't have supported the bill. Well, uh, you know, we've been taken to task because we pointed out the fact that Klein's got a very low approval record uh, rating from the disabled American veterans, including zero ratings for a couple of years. And he is the consistently the lowest rated member of the uh, from the Minnesota delegation. Now, those aren't numbers we came up with. Those are their numbers. Uh, he is uh, he's questioned in the past if in, in subcommittee hearings whether we're spending too much time uh, focusing on post-traumatic stress disorder rather than orthopedic injuries. Uh, I just uh, I just don't believe that that's the case. I think we need to spend a lot of time. Uh, traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress disorder, these are the signature issues of this war. And, uh, you know, we, we know a bit about the injuries that are caused by post-traumatic stress, and, and we still have not done a very good job with uh, returning veterans from Vietnam. Uh, but traumatic brain injury, I think, is a new one for us, and that's going to be uh, we're going to have to deal with the uh, soldiers that have been wounded in that manner for many, many years to come. Uh, we need more resources in the hands of the VA. Uh, they're good stewards of the money. We have to watch over what they're doing, of course, um, but uh, they deserve our support and our soldiers. Uh, they definitely deserve the support uh, when they return home.